Contrary to popular belief, if you're desperate enough, you can actually use any fluid as a lubricant. Uh, this is also relevant to mechanical keyboards. So when you log into r slash mk and ask, can I use x as the lube because Chrysox is expensive to get in insert remote part of the world here, probably Europe, uh, the answer to your question will always be yes. Now before you get too excited and saturate your keyboard in that baby oil you have under your bed for some reason, make sure you're asking yourself this question. Should I use X in my key switches? Because the fact of the matter is, some products are just better lubricants than others, in that they're plastic safe, they last longer, they help produce a better sound, transform the way of friction feels, and are easier to apply. Here on the screen, I'm going through some popular greases we nerds in the community use. Uh, I'll be showing off Crytox 205 grade 0, 206 grade 2, Triburst 3204, and at the end some silicon grease. Uh, after that, I'll be showing you some of the oils we use as well, and the point of all this is just to show you the physical properties of each. Uh, it's important that you visualize and understand this because it helps you get a better understanding as to why some products are considered better than others in specific scenarios. The fact of the matter is, some products are just better lubricants than others in that they're plastic safe, they last longer, they help produce a better sound, they transform the way friction feels, and are just easier to apply. I'll just be talking about some general things for now. Uh, towards the end of the video, I'll go a bit more in depth with each of these greases, so if you wanted to, you can skip to that at the end. So now I'll be going over some important terminology that you should be able to identify and compare between each lubricant. Fluidity or viscosity. So like, water is less viscous than honey, however peanut butter has a greater viscosity than both. Uh, there's more internal friction happening, so it doesn't really flow well. Uh, then there's density, or like softness, hardness, whether it's thick or thin. Uh, it's really important that you understand what these mean and how they can influence your key switches. Crytox products are complex in their composition, with many of their products being highly reclaimed and used in a variety of different industries. Their ranges are very convenient and allow for niche requirements to be met, and you can see this concept applied a lot within this hobby, with different people using different types of Crytox. Those are made from a PFPE. And from that oil, to make the grease variant, PTFE is added to thicken it. When it comes to these products, you have to understand that the Crytox 100 and 200 series are used in the community because it's what's known and found to work. There could be many more alternatives out there that are objectively better and are better value. We just don't know, and I doubt many people are willing to invest the time to search for something. So in short, we're using what we're using because it's the convention and meta. Meaning that in the future, if something new and trendy is found out to be the best lube, our recommendations and usages as a collective will change. Like for example, a year and a bit back, Tribus 3204 was trendy and the go-to, uh, but nowadays if you say you use 3204, uh, some smartass will probably be like, oh nice, <laughs> by the way, how's putting Gator on stamps and Sherry housing working out for you? Makes the smoothest switch ever, right? This is just a reference to how we're so privileged nowadays with our wider range of switches, options, and possibilities. There's nothing wrong with using Gator on sets and cherry housing, if you don't mind being three years behind. The most commonly available plastic safe lubrication is probably a form of silicon grease. So as a beginner starting out, you're probably wondering if I can just use this instead. You could, it's up to you, but... Objectively, it's not ideal or recommended for switches, because there's a good chance that they'll come out too sluggish. However, it's its thickness, density, stickiness, and low price that makes silicon grease highly recommended for stabilizers and wire and housing. It helps minimize movement and dampen the rattle sound loose wire makes. It's possible to apply some of this grease to an already built keyboard. You kind of get a toothpick and get a blob and stick it where the wire and housing touch. This isn't the most optimal way to do it, but it definitely provides some improvement to your stabilizers if you're not able to take them apart. Hopefully looking at these products help give you a better understanding. There isn't a general rule of what lube should get comboed with what switch. You can theory craft and hypothesize. I personally suggest just getting some of each and just testing what combinations you do like. It's important that you just understand how the properties of lube can affect a tactile or linear switch. Tactility will be affected when you add a lubricant, even if you don't go over the legs. 
This is because the friction is different and the stem slides down the housing so easily that the tactility is less emphasized. It's unfortunate when you start out and have no real basis or experiences with many keyboard things. So you do some research and try and ask for help, uh, but the replies you get are just like, yeah, it's preference, so you know, just whatever you like. Uh, when they say this, they half mean that your mileage may vary, so do what you like. And the other half meaning that they can't be bothered providing anything constructive. So if you ask, can I use 206 on my linears? You'll get those people that just say, yeah, you can, just don't overdo it. Those that say no because it makes them too sluggish, and that one person that will say preference. When in reality, the answer to that question is no, you can't use 206 on linears, because according to Greek mythology, as soon as you do, the earth will prematurely fall into an ice age, get blasted by meteors, and then promptly implode. The opposite of this is true, but you shouldn't just be spoon fed and buy the first thing someone suggests to you. Viscosity is also important to consider because it will also determine how well it would adhere to the surface. For example, I got this random thin plastic safe lube to try out back when I was new. Turns out it dries up and gets too thin when applied to plastic. Uh, it's also bad for springs as well. It doesn't minimize or reduce crunch at all. TX Oils is a lot better for this. It comes with its springs as well, so it's nice to have around and use on those. You can use whatever you want on springs, but if you're after something that reduces noise, you definitely want something with a high viscosity, or even a- Using Crytox greases isn't a common thing though, because of how expensive it is, and you end up needing a lot of it. It's also harder to apply. 7 is popular for springs though, you kinda just dip them in, or you can get a brush, dip it in the oil, and then go over the springs. Crystal 111 is pretty unique in that it's a lot softer and doesn't have the properties that many people are used to. You're less likely to make your switches sluggish and it doesn't reduce tactility as much. You see in the video, when it gets thin, it isn't as dense as Crytox, there's less internal friction, and it isn't too sticky. However, this means also that it won't mask imperfections within a switch as well as Crytox. It probably won't sound as deep either. Its benefits are a lot more subtle because it's not as viscous. It's important to acknowledge how lube can change the feel of switches, so much so that it doesn't even feel like plastic against plastic sometimes. A larger proportion of the community actually enjoys this however, it's the feeling people describe as a hot knife through butter. Lubricants like Cristo in my experience don't provide the same effect, so people might not interpret that as ideal. However, it's important to understand that there are pros and cons of each lube. In Christo's case, it gives a more raw, natural, plastic-on-plastic -plastic feeling, and doesn't mask imperfections as well. So you can't use this lube and assume it's just the worst variant of Crytox, because it isn't. It's a different lube with a different application purpose. With that being said, some lubricants like the random one I showed earlier doesn't have enough redeeming qualities to make it worthwhile for me to use, which is another point to consider when making choices to choose what lube you want to use. Is it because it sounds better? Is it because it feels better? Is it because more people recommended it? So keep in mind how friction and resistance will be affected by how much lube you apply. The silicon grease is super thick in comparison to the Crytox greases, so you can see why it isn't recommended by many. 205G0 will be a lot more slippery, which isn't necessarily a good or bad thing, it just depends on the context of your application. I mentioned before how there isn't a perfect combo for lubricants and switches, so like in my mind I would theorize and avoid 205G0 on tactiles, because it would make them too smooth and slippery, therefore lowering the emphasis on tactility. This might not be the case in practice, the loop or switch combo might actually be deemed to me personally actually decent. 
That's why I recommend getting a few different varieties of lubricants to try out. Uh, you could also do the opposite and just choose a middle ground that's not too slippery or not too thick and you could use that for both your tactiles or linears. Lube switches therefore won't feel as they once did, sometimes feeling slightly heavier due to the initial stress required to depress the switch. The downsides of lubing aren't really mentioned so there isn't too much floating around about it, like how lighter weighted linears often end up feeling slightly more heavier after being lubed, simply because of the nature of the process. Saying lube switches are smooth doesn't necessarily mean they weren't smooth in their stock form. Sometimes they're just not as smooth, or not as smooth in comparison. Some lubes will mask imperfections better than others. However, at the end of the day, if the switch is bad due to physical imperfections, like the housing material is rough, ultimately lubricant won't fix this. Putting icing on a burnt cake won't make it taste better. Triburst 3204 is this Crytox 204 specially blended so it doesn't separate as easily. You can kind of see here when I try to get a thin layer of it, it doesn't come out as viscous as the 205G0 next to it. Uh, the 206G2 is a lot more sticky and thick though, it does seem to still spread. Ultimately, like many things, how much you put in is how much you'll get out. I hope this video was useful for you, and I covered enough points. If it's been on your mind for a while and you want to take a step up and explore deeper into the hobby, lubing is most likely where you'll be headed. So make sure you stay educated, aware, and safe while you explore and try new things. There's a bit of confirmation bias when lubing switches, so I thought it'd be fun to talk about. Lube switches will be smoother. Yes, you're adding something to change the friction, so yes, they will feel different. That's a given. The confirmation bias here is the degree of benefit and improvement you get from lubing an already smooth switch. So like, if there's someone telling me to avoid eating a certain dessert because it's too sweet, if I do inevitably try it out, my brain will focus and search for the information to confirm or deny this, the idea of it being too sweet. But because someone did mention how sweet it is, more likely than not, it probably is sweet. The notion in itself is valid, however, the degree of sweetness will be up for us to interpret. Yes, it is sweet, but is it too sweet? So applying this idea to lube switches, when someone tells you lube switches will feel better, and you do try lube switches, you definitely will notice the difference in feel, and more likely than not, agree with the notion and say yes, it is smooth. Therefore, it is better. Confirmation bias isn't necessarily bad or good, it's just a notion present in Confirmation bias isn't necessarily bad or good, it's just a notion present in everyday decision making. We agree with something, therefore we hold merit to the claim. The degree of improvement value and whether the process is worth investing in is up to the individual to determine. However, in most cases, people who do lubricate switches will continue to lubricate switches because the improvement in feel and sound is good. I personally think it's important to apply some rationality towards this hobby, so you don't end up feeling like buying everything because of FOMO, or will lessen the degree of it. An example being, you already bought 300 of these new loose smooth switches. However, 
you see there's a new switch coming out, claiming that they're super smooth as well, because no switch nowadays has that claim. Depending on the individual, you might be inclined to purchase them because why not? And it, ultimately, it is your choice whether, whether or not you invest in them. But it's good to ask yourself, why are you buying them? Is it because they're supposedly super smooth? Or are you buying them because you want to have them? And smoothness is just a plus. Please understand, there's so much pseudoscience in this hobby. If you take things with a grain of salt, your experiences will be better and reflect reality. So please keep that in mind the next time you're conceptualizing an opinion based off some random's 8-word Reddit comment.